something you need when you need in Forest Park. Hi, I'm Mike Isaacson, the executive producer of The Muni, and I'm here at the PNC Gazebo talking to Rob McClure, who is back at The Muni this season as Bert and Mary Poppins after taking the town <laughs> as Farquhar in Shrek. And I say this very honestly, uh, you've been here before, you were here in Little Shop in 2011, and this city is in love with you. Oh. Uh, I'm in love with the city, so it's a, it's a healthy relationship. So here's my first question to you. Like, I, you know, I sort of show up into rehearsals like four or five days, and I love to watch, you know, because each show and each uh, actor, their own rhythm, their mm -hmm. own what they do. And what's fascinating about watching you is I never see your mind stop working on the rehearsal mm -hmm. room. Like, you're always, you're like what I call what-if performer. Like, I always feel like you approach every moment as what if what what is yeah. that is that yeah i think I, i've i've never sort of diagnosed it but I, I i think i think that's right i think that's right i love i love the sense of play like i really do embrace the make-believe side of things uh i'm less technique oriented and more about pretend let's imagine yeah. um and i think it's that sense of play that i like to try um, and uh and when it's the right kind of team and gary and alex and, and the team behind this show and you embrace that sense of of what if and that sense of uh, just try it try it and we'll see yeah. um i love that i love that sort of atmosphere you have great instincts when you're playing mm. like you'll i'll see you and you know you just you just hit it and i'm fascinated for you as as a person as a artist as a performer like growing up how did you discover that you had that um i think uh, I learned from from watching, uh, from watching and admiring. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of this art form uh, above yeah. <laughs> even being a participant in it. And I feel like the people that I love watching, the 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 Ray Bolgers and the Dick Van Dykes and the um, and, and that goes across the board. They don't have to have to be song and dance men. The Cole Wilkinsons and the just the fearless. They just there's something about them that they just go for it. Um, and and that's that's what I hope I'm doing, and I hope I'm finding my own sort of sense of abandon and my own sense of uh, what it is I have to bring to the table. And in roles like this, that are so much fun and so nostalgic and so um, special and joyful, um, the sense of play I think lends itself to that. And so I hope that my instincts are are in line with that because that's what I'm I'm hoping for. So you grew up in, where'd you grow up? Jersey. Jersey. North, North Jersey, right across the George Washington Bridge. From so were you were always going to Broadway shows? No, no. I thought I, I, uh, I, I was a late bloomer. Uh, 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 some people start when they're really young, but I, I started with the high school shows and I didn't know I was good at it. I just knew it was fun. Uh, it was another extracurricular thing to put on a college resume. It's like, okay, I'll right. do the bowling team in the winter <laughs> and I'll do the play. In the, um, Are you a good but, bowler? Uh, yeah, Broadway bowling. Okay. Second place this year. Really? Oh, yeah. We wow, don't mess congratulations. Thank <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm a child for Thanks. All right, awesome. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, and uh, so I just started doing the plays in high school, and it, and it was um, the sense of collaboration and the sense of camaraderie I didn't find anywhere else. And I was an athlete in school. Yeah. I played all kinds of sports, and you do get a sense of team there, but it's different. It's different when you rely on people in the way you do when you're mounting a show. Um, it's a sense of family that I hadn't experienced uh, in, in any other activity, um, so I latched on. Well, I've seen you play uh, an extraordinary number of parts. I remember you in the Avenue Q tour and, and all kinds of things you've done. And what I think is really fascinating in, like in your Farquhar, you completely captured a total sense of anarchy. <laughs> Oh, that, that the audience just loved. Like every time you came on stage, they felt, okay, we don't know where we're going. Oh, like, good. Like, like fasten the seatbelts, here he is again. <laughs> and yet you had total command. Like you knew where we were going, but you were able to get across this, <laughs> all bets are off. Oh, fun. And I just find that fascinating, that sort of dual, how do you do that? Um, I, I think a lot of it starts from the top. And, and John Tartaglia had a very clear vision for what he wanted to do with Farquaad in terms of, in terms of fun, um, and in terms of him being sort of the person who can break the fourth wall and him being the person who could who could play with the audience, but also needed to be a legitimate threat um, and a legitimate villain. And I think that that's where that duality came from, is that he could be fun and he could 
turn on a dime and, and say the most ridiculous things, um, but still live in the plot yeah. and still be a foil and still be a, a provide conflict. And, um, and I think that that's a balance that's so much fun to, to maintain the world of the show and to maintain the, the plot and what your character needs to be, but while, while being able to break the rules. And well, it's, it's funny because Johnny at one point said to me, he said, what I'm loving about Rob, what he's doing is he's, he's willing to when he needs to be truly evil. Oh, good, good. You know, so, yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, and, and I, I felt that toward the end. You know, I, it was fun for him to be so sort of eccentric and flamboyant. And, um, but when push comes to shove, he really wanted this. He really does want to be uh, king in, in whatever capacity that. So, talk takes. about your Bert. Who's your Bert? Bert, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because uh, so many people ask me. Is he real? Is he there? Is he a storyteller? Is he a guardian angel? Yeah. Is he Mary's boyfriend? Who, who is this guy? And the answer is, I think it's up for grabs. I, I don't think it's nailed down. Um, and and, and I've, I've sort of decided that there is sort of a love affair that's going on, but, it's, but it can't cross worlds. Mary exists in a world that's timeless and that, um, that uh, can, <laughs> has no limits. And, and I think Bert very much has his feet on the ground, um, but wants to be with this sort of magical creature. And I feel like they have, they are very much in love, I think. Um, I, but, I, but I think it can never be, um, which I love. I love that sort of heartbreaking friendship um, that can never go past where they want it to because he's, on, he's here and she's got to go fix families. <laughs>